Hey guys, this is Lindsay with Vinyl Gallery and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, I will be working on this pastel tumbler using glitter and vinyl and I tried to keep it as beginner friendly as possible. If you'd like to see how I created this look, just keep watching. So today I'll be using a 20 ounce sublimation tumbler and I got this batch of tumblers a while back and they were messed up from the manufacturer so I've just been sitting there looking at them and they've been looking at me but what you want to do is you want to take a piece of sanding paper and you want to just scuff up the surface and you want to make sure you get the entire shiny coat off of the surface that way your paint and glitter and epoxy will have something to adhere to. While sanding, you want to make sure that you are sanding that shiny surface off, but you don't want to sand so far down until you start to expose the stainless steel. And that's only important if you plan on using the white as a base coat for your colors. After I got done sanding, I just sprayed it with 91% rubbing alcohol, but there was a little too much dust, so I did take it over to the sink and clean it with dish soap and water. So, for this project I'll be using this particular piece of printed vinyl that is available on my website in addition to these four acrylic paints by Folk Art and you'll need a roll of one inch painters tape. Here I'm just using a sewing measuring tape that I accidentally borrowed from my mom so thanks mom but the, from top to bottom it measured out to be about eight inches tall which allowed me four glitter colors and four strips of vinyl. Right here I'm just trying to figure out exactly where my vinyl will go and where my glitter will go and if I don't write it down I don't remember it and you can see off to the side that I wrote everything down so that I would not forget it. Once you get everything mapped out you want to start with a piece of one inch painters tape and this piece of tape is probably the most important piece that you will place on the cup because if this piece is not straight everything else will be off so you want to make sure that you get that top piece lined up perfectly. And I know it's looking like I used a lot of tape, but you will use the pieces that you pull off to cover the vinyl when we get ready to apply our glitter. Now I'm just going in with my paper trimmer or vinyl trimmer. I refuse to pull out my Silhouette or Cricut for this project. So I'm just taking this measuring one inch strips and I cut about four or five just to be on the safe side, which does leave you another half sheet of vinyl for future projects if you should wanna make it again. Once I got all of my tape on and straight, I decided to go in and apply my first strip of vinyl. I did leave the top piece for glitter for sanding purposes, but I'm just going in now and I'm applying each strip of vinyl and I will cut and I will go all the way down the cup, removing the tape that is marked V for vinyl. Now y'all yeah, will see, I am gonna jump on the struggle bus here for a second, but I'm not gonna make you watch the entire application of this vinyl, but this is basically the process that I used. Also, when you're applying your vinyl, make sure your seams are all lining up in one spot, so you want a straight line of seams if possible. Once I was done placing all of my vinyl strips, I just took the tape and repurposed it <laughs> and I placed it on top of each vinyl strip just for glittering and painting purposes because I do get a little bit messy, but that's okay. Now we will be moving into the painting process. I could have used um, glitter glue in this process, but I wanted to make sure that I had a really, really nice base coat because these glitters are opal and iridescent. To apply my paint, I'm just using a Wet n Wild makeup brush that I purchased from the Dollar 25 tree and each color will get two coats. It does dry pretty quickly, so by the time I got to the bottom of the cup, I was able to go right back in with the same colors, in the same order rather, and apply a second coat. 
the brush I used for my green paint was a little bit damp so I did have to squeeze the excess water out with a paper towel but went right back in and applied that coat of paint as well. Because the glitter that I'm using is opalescent, you definitely want to make sure that you have pretty nice smooth coats of paint underneath. Because this paint dried so fast, I literally could have sat it there for about 10 minutes and it would have been fully dry, but I got a little impatient because I was excited, so I did use my heat gun to try to speed up the process. After my paint was fully dry, I went in with Adhesive Apothecary Stick Formula Glitter Glue and I just basically put it right on top of the paint, mixed it in, and now we are ready to apply our glitter. Once I get a full coat of glue added, I just take my paintbrush and I just dab it all the way around just to prevent any possible streaks or lines when I'm applying my glitter. These glitters are from the bundle that Leisha with Leisha Be Created and I came up with. She hand drew some patterns and I matched them with these glitters and they are my, my most favorite glitters. And the name of the pink one is Oh My Lanta. And the funny story behind this is we came up with the names based off of some of her most favorite sayings. So the pink is Oh My Lanta. If you do not already follow her channel, please, please, please go like and subscribe. She is an amazing Tumblr artist and you will hear a lot of these sayings in her videos. I'm just going to repeat this process all the way down the tumbler to apply our glitter. And now for the green, the name of this glitter is obviously, <laughs> I hope I'm saying it like she says it. I typically use the thick formula. I do have both, the regular and the thick, but I typically use the thick formula when I'm using chunkier glitters. And you kind of want to work a little bit fast and only use what you need at the time because it does dry pretty quickly. And now we are going in with the blue glitter. And the name of this glitter is, if you will, and I think that's probably the most iconic statement that she makes in her lives and YouTube tutorials. <laughs> At first with this yellow, I was a little bit nervous because I thought it was going to be too bold and not the pastel look that I was going for, but it actually turned out quite perfect. Going right in with the yellow glitter and the name of this glitter is So. <laughs> That is another classic saying of hers as well. After we applied all of our glitter, I'm just taking my heat gun and I'm not drying it completely, just enough to be able to pull the tape. You definitely do not want to pull up any paint or glitter in this process. I prefer to use the blue painter's tape because it does not leave a sticky residue behind when you remove it from your vinyl, but I think the tape pools are probably the most satisfying part of this tumbler for me. Because I did use the thick formula glitter glue, I do not have any pokey bits of glitter poking up, so I really didn't have to press anything down, but this is what we have so far. Once my tumbler was completely dry, I did take a chip brush and brush off any excess glitter, and I'm just taking some 50-50 mixed crystal lac glitter glue to seal my glitters. This mix is about 50% water, 50% glue, and I did get this from Made by Manny and Mal's channel, and it does work perfect. It does dry clear, and I'm just taking a chip brush, and I'm just trying to seal in just the glitter because I did not want any glitter to move or migrate. Going forward, I probably would use more so of a sponge to apply this instead, so keep a baby wipe handy because you may have some glitter bits flicking and flying everywhere. Once done, I set this off to the side to dry and I went in with two coats of Flynn Sisters Fast Cure Epoxy. The vinyl that I'm using for my striping both came from Tech Wrap Craft. 
The green is the larger stripe and it's 0.14. The rainbow is 0 0.007. I thought the green vinyl was so pretty, it was pastel, and that's when I realized I had made a Bob Ross happy moment because this green vinyl is glow in the dark. Now, I don't know about y'all, but vinyl striping takes me a pretty good amount of time. Here it is up close, and I'm just making sure that I'm still lining up my seams with my original floral pattern vinyl. Once I get all my green laid down, I go right back in with the thinner rainbow vinyl, and I am lining up with the seams in the back and just doing this entire process all the way up the cup. I did not want to bore you with applying the vinyl all the way up this tumbler, so I'm just going to move right in after I get all of that done and I'm going to seal again with this Crystal Lac Glitter Glue and Water Mix and once that dries we will be ready for another thin coat of epoxy. So now for the decal, all of the vinyls that I used in today's video are from Tech Wrap Craft. I do not know the names, um, I sell these vinyls in my store but I don't know the names of them. But I used the green as a base, and then I went in with this holographic, shifty, orange, pink, yellow vinyl for the middle, and a purple lilac for the top. So I found this image on Creative Fabrica in a bundle. I will leave a link for you to try that bundle at a discounted price in the description box. But this is just my process of aligning three layers of vinyl. After I had everything weeded on the first two layers, I just took a piece of painter's tape and applied it to the top of the bottom layer. And I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper to be able to line up my decal so that it will go down as straight as I could possibly make it. I love doing it this way because the parchment paper does not stick to your decal and you can see straight through it. And once I was done lining everything up, I just removed the parchment paper and laid it down on top of the green layer. After I measured to make sure that it was on even and straight, I just used the hinge method and I take my large oversized squeegee and I just placed the decal on the tumbler. So I have already weeded the final layer and it had some thin small bits and I was not going to attempt to try to place this all on there at one time even with the parchment paper. So I did cut it into pieces and I layered it piece by piece. Now y'all know I love me some Tech Wrap Craft vinyl and this is typically why I do not handle my tumblers or apply vinyl with my bare hand because this vinyl would not stick in certain places. And I know it's not the vinyl, I know it's because my hands were probably sweaty because I keep my shop at around 78 degrees for epoxy purposes. Now that the wrestling match is complete with that last layer of vinyl, I'm going to definitely seal this with my Crystal Lac Glitter Glue mix that we made. And this just ensures that the vinyl does not lift when the epoxy is applied. I normally use quick coat, but this time I decided to go that route, but you can use whatever sealers that you like. And this tumbler took three final coats of the Flynn Sisters Artist Cure Formula, and this is the finished result. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please give us a huge thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I will have everything that I use listed in the description box. And until next time, bye.